government has no authority to infringe upon that right if you are a law-abiding citizen. Right. They solely exist to protect those rights. The moment there is an enforcement of policy that infringes upon your basic fundamental yeah. human rights, resistance is at least an appropriate discussion. I want to talk better. about this, 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 no. uh, this idea of people now are, are labeling anyone who criticizes the government or accuses uh, policies of being tyrannical of making death threats. Yeah. And I think this is a discussion that we actually should have. A lot of people don't want to have it because no one wants to be tarred and feathered as someone who's an extremist right, yeah. or issuing death threats. No one here is issuing death threats. I want to be really clear, right? right? Half-Asian lawyer You've heard me none, say this repeatedly. None, none. Good. Okay. Legally covered. So let's start it with this. Beto uh, O'Rourke, for, in case you think of another Beto. Mm. <laughs> there isn't one. You want to say Beto? Someone's going, Beto Nathaniel? <laughs> no. I knew a Beto back in junior high, oh but gosh. I don't think he proposed a gun buy back. <laughs> it might not be the same one. So Beto, he repeated his demands for a mandatory gun buy back program at the, the debates this Tuesday. Listening to my fellow Americans, to those moms who demand action, to those students who march for our lives, who in fact came up with this extraordinary bold peace you, plan Congress. that calls for mandatory buybacks, let's follow their inspiration and lead. Mm, let's just follow their inspiration. Oh, yeah. No. No. It doesn't matter how much of a violation of human rights it is as long as you were inspired. It doesn't yeah. matter. Just do it. Hitler looked at some <laughs> nice watercolors. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, and just to be clear, we want to make sure that we are not taking him out of context. Right. I encourage you to go watch the full debates. The next day, when asked about it, he doubled down on his comments. In that case, uh, I think there would be a, a visit by law enforcement to recover oh. that firearm oh. and to make sure that it is purchased, bought back, so that it cannot be potentially used against somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Because you would never want a firearm to potentially be used against someone else. No. That never. almost might negate the purpose of right. firearms. Yeah. Now, keep yeah. in mind, by the way, while That's we're talking actually. about this, Beto was uh, arrested for burglary <laughs> and had a DUI fled the scene. So the guy proposing yeah. this is somebody yeah. who b was burgling. <laughs> He's familiar he with it. You know, you're one of the great cat burglars in the world, Beto. You think you can keep it down for a minute in there, huh? <laughs> This is something that's important to note, even at the Democratic debates, I think that's why he doubled down the next day. Yeah. The Democrats went out of their way. They wanted to challenge him on this. And I think this stems from Beto was struggling, I think, to get one or two percent in the polls. One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And so he said, you know what? Democrats obviously are pushing to this. I'm just going to come out and say mandatory gun buyback, gun confiscation. That was his yeah. Hail Mary. And yeah. Democrats are going, ooh, we can just pick this guy off more effectively than yeah. Tulsi Gabbard picked off uh, Kamala Harris a couple of <laughs> debates ago. <laughs> Which, by the way, Tulsi Gabbard, I actually think the only two reasonable people on that stage, Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, Tulsi Gabbard has no chance. She's too high. You can't have a president who's that attractive. People will it's not, not feel work. comfortable around it. Notably, Justin Trudeau. He's going to be competing, sizing her up, you know, putting his shoulders up. Yeah. I feel like an episode of Mean Girls. Yeah. So the Democrats went after, oh, okay. I want to make sure that we show a clip, they went after yeah. Beto O'Rourke saying, well, oh, uh -huh, okay, Beto, how are you going to enforce that? It's unenforceable. Our fellow Americans will follow the law. Yes. Congressman, um, and mass every shooters don't fall by definition. Million... The mass shooters in Parkland, in El Paso, I could go on for 10 minutes. They don't follow the law by definition. Well, it's but wouldn't it be nice if they did? You just yeah. made it clear that you don't know how this is actually going to take weapons off the streets. If you can develop the plan further, I think we can have a debate about it. Well, I, oh, he can't gosh. and you can't no. debate about it. <laughs> Knowing this, you know, last week the left, they had a meltdown claiming that Ben Shapiro had threatened to murder someone yeah. because he did say that he would resist the Democratic agenda if it violated basic human rights. I want you to watch the clip. Now, full disclosure, I'm friends with Ben Shapiro. I've known him for a while. I was like, he negotiated my first business contract. Yeah. We just met through Andrew Breitbart and I said, you know, You've got a lot of vowels in your last name, and you seem like you can negotiate this for <laughs> work out. I didn't know Bill at the time. I said Shapiro, probably a good lawyer, and he there did. He did it very well. Nice. So I just want, yes, I am biased, but I want you to watch the clip for yourself and see if he made a death threat in any shape or form. There's only one reason the government exists, to protect those rights, not invade those rights. It is my right to raise my child with the moral precept that I find to be beneficial for my child. Beta O'Rourke does not get to raise my child. And if he tries, I will meet him at the door with a gun. I don't. Uh, he's basically talking Damn about a home right? intrusion yeah. scenario. Wow. Well, I mean, he's talking about protecting. Exactly. He's not talking about threatening. He's not going out to look for Beto O'Rourke. He's saying, right. look, if you come and try to invade my right. space and try to tell me how to do this, I'm going to protect myself. Right. I mean, I think the Simple. one the one thing I would say that is at least intellectually honest about what Beto is saying is that he's admitting that the plan that he has been talking about and that other Democrats have talked about will lead to using guns to seize other guns from right. people who aren't using their guns wrong. Yeah, and right. so finally admitting it, and now even the left is admitting it's not really a plan that will make sense in any kind of efficacy type of way. Yeah, absolutely, that's, that, 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 that's a fact. Um, <laughs> it does beg the question, 
when, if ever, is armed resistance required or appropriate? And right. how is drawing a line in the sand on that basis, how, we need, how is that different from a death threat? Again, half Asian Bill, my lawyer, not making any death threats. I am not issuing any call to violence here with this segment, okay? Right, he's not. Good? Okay, good. Okay. So let's go through point one uh, for Gerald examining B. this conversation. Because to, to, think that, no. to think that resistance or to think that some kind of armed resistance or armed violent conflict can't happen today is naive. Right. It's to not understand ba the basic human condition. And yeah. it happens across the world today, by the way. Slavery still happens today. And we'll get back to that. This idea that we're well past that so we don't need guns anymore is, act is so factually off beam that it's the actual re we need firearms. Because the only way to protect oneself in the modern world is with firearms, and that's yeah. why it's a God-given right. So let's look at the history as to what in the past, throughout history, humans thought warranted some kind of resistance, right? Uh, and differentiating that, let's differentiate that from senseless violence. So yeah. one, let's take an example here and say a death threat versus setting a line in the sand, right. a boundary, okay? So one, like saying if someone breaks into my house in the middle of the night while I and my family are there, uh, I'm going to protect it with my firearm. Yeah, Okay. reasonable. That's issuing a line. Putting, drawing a line in the sand, creating boundaries. The other, a death threat, would be saying, I'm gonna kill everyone at the post office. One's appropriate, one's a reprehensible crime. Yeah. When we look at hi history, there are through lines as to when people have resorted to armed resistance legitimately. Right. Okay? Usually it requires the invasive removal of very personal human rights. I'll give you a few examples here. Uh, of course, with the American Revolution, you can see freedom of religion was a big one. Yeah. People wanted to be able to, to worship freely. Uh, the government was not representative of its, of its constituents. Taxation without representation. Yeah. That mirrors quite a bit what happened with the French Revolution. Right? We have the Civil War over slavery. I would argue that's a good thing. Someone was trying to say, you are going yeah. to be enslaved. I'm going to remove your right to be free. And there was a call to arms, which is also why we have the Second Amendment in the first place. And as far as the guesswork, I like to take it out uh, of yeah. this equation here, but which rights are worth fighting over? Um, we have a guide to our stars, if you will, the Constitution. Mm. And it expressly outlines human rights, natural rights, human rights as granted by God. That's what's important. Yes. You may just think it's some, some uh, imaginary being in the sky, that's fine, but you still benefit from the idea that the founding, the premise that the founding fathers used to establish the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. They said, this is the government cannot grant or remove these rights. They can only exist to protect them. So again, when, if ever, is armed resistance appropriate? And uh, can someone discuss it in 2019 without being accused of a death threat? Speaking of death, our channel is actually still alive and well. Thanks to you. <laughs> Hit the yes. notification bell if you're subscribed uh, because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. And just bookmark the page. New video every single day. If you want this content to continue, join MugClub, loudoutcutter.com slash MugClub. So let, let me kind of make this clear and then uh, you guys can obviously chime in. Sure. When would it be appropriate? Let's start with when it would be inappropriate. Okay. When would it be inappropriate to ever defend yourself or mount some kind of resistance? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it would be inappropriate for any kind of violent resistance due to a personal affront, due to policy differences, yeah. due to uh, ad hominem attacks, or even due to a proposal of a policy that you think could lead to tyranny. None of those would be appropriate instances to stand your ground. Okay. And there's, there's, some, there's some nuance in there, obviously, yeah. but let me tell you where it gets black and white. There ceases to be nuance. The moment there is an enforcement of policy that infringes upon your basic fundamental yeah. human rights, resistance is at least an appropriate discussion. So we've said where it's not appropriate, let me give you some clear examples where I think it could be appropriate. Uh, let's start with, with Beto O'Rourke, going house yeah. to house to take people's guns. Yes, yes. which is ha he has to do that, right? We're not talking about an assault weapons ban, you know, which yeah. basically means like, okay, this this is legal, illegal. Is it, ah, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> you've broken no law. When we're talking about house to house taking yeah. guns, let me be clear, you've broken no law, it is your personal property. You have the right to own that gun, correct? And everything thus far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. The government has no authority to infringe upon that right if you are a law-abiding citizen. Right. They solely exist to protect those rights. So let me give you another example. If some person um, has seized control, to which they have no right, decides that they want to rewrite laws so that they can simply infringe upon your God-given rights, it's, it's, it's illegitimate. Yeah. I won't recognize that. Just, in this, just as in the same way, if someone walks into my house who's an intruder, he has not been granted permission, you know, like a vampire, I didn't invite him in. Mm -mm. Yeah. If I do, nope. it's on me. It's on me. <laughs> I'm gonna be pale in the face. I get it. It's a rule. <laughs> 
right? If he comes in, he does not have the right to take any of my stuff, including my firearm. Neither does a member of the government. They do yeah. not have the right to do that just because someone said, I am going to create a new law. So let's compare it to the freedom of speech scenario, okay? Yeah. But let's kind of go on that, that uh, flip side of the coin here. So. I have the right to speak freely. That's recognized in the Constitution. What does that mean? If I am out speaking against the government, let's say I'm at a right to life rally, yeah. okay? Let's just say I'm speaking offensively. For example, I don't know, using your biologically proper pronouns. <laughs> so, <laughs> so offensive, canceled. Just because it offends somebody doesn't mean they have the right to punch me in the face. Antifa right. can't come up, throw a concrete milkshake. At, I have the right to defend myself with appropriate force. Yeah. Equal and opposing reaction, right? That would be no different than if I went out and spoke against the government and they sent armed people to jail me. Those yeah, people yeah. are removing my right to speak freely and enshrined in the Constitution uh, by force. I believe that in that instance, it is appropriate to defend yourself. These are extreme examples. Yeah. At least they would have been theoretical examples, except for the fact that Beto O'Rourke brought it to the world <laughs> as a very concrete yeah. example. Yeah. He would send people house to house yeah. to take your guns with their own guns. Yeah. Made it very Absolutely. clear. The yeah. government has no authority in telling me what I can and cannot say. Just because a new politician says they can, it doesn't mean that I'm actually breaking the law. It's a natural law. It's a human right. It is not a political policy. And I'd like to toss a to bill on that a little bit. A lot yeah. of people don't understand the idea of, of natural rights, human rights. These are birthrights. Well, they're, they're, they're the idea that the rights themselves are outside of or above and not given by government. Because at right. some point when you say yeah. that the government is the one that can create the rights and those rights don't pre-exist the government. So not only have you unhinged the idea of rights except for someone who's giving it to you, um, right. but you have no way to say if a group of people get together and say, yeah, you actually don't have any rights anymore, so yeah, clean yeah. my house, right? I mean, it's just, yeah, exactly. that's that's the kind of natural thought that led back to a, a democratic-led right. fight for slavery, you know, a century ago. Wait, wait, when did I lose that right? Eh, Beto did a kickflip. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, freedom of religion, right? To worship freely. Yeah. But I don't care. Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Scientology, doesn't matter. If some random guy comes into my church or your mosque with a gun, yeah. Right, telling you that the flying spaghetti monster has led to more wars than blah, 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 blah. Okay, we get it. Everyone yeah. who says it, it's like, we understand that you took Humanities 101, edgy <laughs> atheist. <laughs> That's not what this is about. Nice. We have the right to defend ourselves if someone walks into a mosque or a church with a gun. Why? Because it's a natural human right. They cannot tell us how we can worship. Now, if the government does that same thing in saying, listen, I'm sorry, and this is what Ben Shapiro was speaking to, you can't take your child to that Christian school. You yeah. have to send him to our public school. You can't teach your son that theology. It has to match our new tolerant guidelines, and they attempt to enforce it, which Beto was really clear about, means people door to door with guns. Yeah. Resistance is an appropriate discussion at that point to have. Yeah. Not a call to arms, not a death threat. Context, context, context. Let's the Young Turks try and take this clip and say, call to arms, look at it, it's bullshit. <laughs> I want to make sure we're really clear. The oh government gosh. at that point is no different than a man entering a mosque with a gun to try and stop you from worshiping freely. This is about establishing boundaries. Yeah. Okay, more importantly, it's about engaging everyone here, not only in this room, but if you're watching, uh, in a discussion about boundaries so that we can set them before they are crossed yeah. in order to avoid any violent conflict. All right, when you set boundaries and people know that those boundaries exist, for example, if someone says, listen, if I'm a law-abiding citizen and you send someone in my house with a gun, well, my family's there to try and take my stuff, whether it's my Flat screen? I was going to say plasma. I don't think plasma is That was a midget. Old. Old. Each with their own 50-inch plasma screen. Think about that. That was <laughs> only the super wealthy. Yeah. Oh, damn, unfettered capitalism. Now I can get it at Walmart, a Westinghouse for $40. Anyway. Yeah. But if someone, for, for me to say, listen, if someone with a gun comes into my house to take my property, whether it's a TV or a gun, no, this, I'm not going to allow it. I will meet you at the door with a gun. That is a boundary. That is a line in the sand that if someone knows, actually assists them in avoiding some kind of a violent conflict. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you don't set boundaries, you're often the last to know when you've crossed them or they've been crossed. Your, your basic human rights, birth rights, defending them is completely justifiable. I don't think it's controversial. You know, because if the government just said we had slavery in this country, terrible, context, context, slavery bad, okay? When I context! Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Um, Canceled. <laughs> Again. We had slavery, so it's not, and there's slavery across the globe. Wrap so if the up. government were to say slavery's back, you can resist that. I think it's an appropriate response to resist it violently. Yep. In that instance, and I would be with black people if they wanted to put y'all back in chains, right? The, why? Because the government doesn't have the right to enslave people. Right. We only know that now because we fought over that. It was a resistance. I'm okay with that.
Oh, did you like this video? Subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay in the loop. There were videos playing in boxes, but I was just enjoying my pipe. And this pipe was actually purchased through your support at Mug Club, because we don't make any money off of YouTube. LighterEarthCutter.com slash Mug Club. Not only do you get access to the entire Blaze catalog, this wonderful hand-etched mug, but hours of content that you don't get to see or find or search here on YouTube. In other words, if you want the show to continue, you, you, you join Mug Club. And then I'll expand my pipe collection. Ha, ha, ha.